Hello friends, this video on photosynthesis in higher plants part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this, we will now start our discussion on the two sets of reactions of photosynthesis. First, we will talk about the light reactions. Now, introducing light reaction, all that I would like to say is these are those set of reactions which will help to produce energy and this energy will be utilized in the dark reactions to synthesize sugar. So, sugar synthesis or food preparation actually will take place in the dark reaction but for the dark reaction to take place, we need energy and that energy will be produced in the light reaction. So, now we will concentrate only on the energy production in light reaction. So, this reaction will occur in the thylakoids because the thylakoids of the chloroplast contain the pigment called chlorophyll. So, our aim in the light reaction is to absorb or utilize the light energy to form energy in the form of ATP molecules or NADPH molecules. So, we will try to synthesize or produce ATP and NADPH. ATP is adenosine triphosphate which is the energy currency of cell and NADPH is nicotinamide adenine diphosphate which is again an energy rich molecule which is capable of producing three ATP molecules. So we are going to produce this high energy rich molecules by utilizing the light energy. So who will utilize the light energy? Who will absorb the light energy? The pigments which are present inside the plant. What is that pigment? Chlorophyll A. Where is chlorophyll present? It is present in the thylakoids inside the chloroplast. Therefore, the light reaction will take place in the thylakoids. So, in the light reaction, basically the solar energy or the light energy, we can say that the solar energy will get converted into chemical energy. So, solar energy is nothing but the light energy or sunlight. Chemical energy is nothing but the energy stored in the ATP molecules or the NADPH molecules. So now a question to think here is how this conversion will take place? How solar energy or the light energy will get converted into energy in the form of ATP molecules or NADPH molecules? So that is our aim here to understand the process through which this conversion takes place. So we will now talk about photosystems. So what are photosystems? A new term for you here. Now as I said that the light reactions will take place in the thylakoids because thylakoids are the structures where chlorophyll is present and chlorophyll are the pigments which can absorb light energy. Now inside the thylakoid, not inside the thylakoid, rather in the thylakoid membranes, there are some complexes or structures which are present which are known as light absorbing complexes. So, these light harvesting units of thylakoid membranes are known as photosystems. So, how the chlorophyll molecules will absorb light energy and utilize it to form ATP molecules. That is what we have to see here. So, now the light, how the light energy is absorbed and utilized. That is done by the chlorophyll molecules and they all together form a complex or a unit which is known as light harvesting complex. Often it is known as LHC. That is light harvesting complex or light harvesting units. So here in the picture you can see a photosystem. So it consists of the pigment molecules. This green colored molecules which you see here they are nothing but the chlorophyll pigment molecules. So each of them are chlorophyll molecules. What is photon? They are nothing but the particles of the light. Light has both particle as well as wave nature. So when you talk about the particle nature of light, light is made up of photons. So when the light energy falls on these pigment molecules, the light energy is absorbed and then passed on to different molecules. So now we will see what is the structure of a light harvesting complex or a photosystem? What does it consist of? Now, this light harvesting system is also known as antenna. They are also called antenna. And where are they present? They are present in the thylakoid membranes. So, thylakoid, you remember the coin like structures which I was talking about? So, they also have a membrane. So, in the membrane of the thylakoids, these photosystems are present. 
Now each photosystem has an antenna of few hundreds of pigment molecules. So this antenna can have hundreds and hundreds of pigment molecules. If you talk about the structure of a photosystem, each photosystem is made up of a reaction center and accessory pigments. So it has got a reaction center. You see here, this is the reaction center. What is a reaction center? It is that part which contains the special molecule which is best at absorbing light of a specific wavelength. For example, I was talking about the main pigment which is involved in photosynthesis that is chlorophyll A. And what are the accessory pigments? Chlorophyll B, xanthophylls, carotenoids. So every photosystem will consist of a reaction center and that reaction center will consist of the main pigment which is good at absorbing a specific wavelength of light. So that reaction center will definitely consist of chlorophyll A. This will consist of chlorophyll A. Now this chlorophyll A will be good at absorbing a specific wavelength of light. Whereas other than the reaction center, it also consists of other pigment molecules which are the accessory pigments. Right? So whenever I talk about a photosystem, a photosystem has the reaction center which has the main pigment and it has all other accessory pigments. So these photosystem basically will help to absorb the light energy and then harvest it and then send it further for the utilization of light energy. Now there are two types of, majorly there are two types of photosystems which exist in plants. Now it is not that only two types of photosystem exist, there can be other photosystems as well but the most prominent photosystems of them are the two photosystems. PS1 and PS2. So PS stands for photosystem. So photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. Now PS1 consists of chlorophyll A P700. That means in PS1 also any photosystem will have one reaction center and accessory pigments. So for PS1 the reaction center has chlorophyll A which is good at absorbing light of wavelength 700 nanometer. So this chlorophyll A is good at absorbing only this wavelength of light. So whereas in PS2, it has chlorophyll A, which is good at absorbing a light of 680 nanometers. So that means if it is a PS1, it will absorb a different type of light energy. Whereas if it is PS2, it will absorb a different type of light energy. So if light falls on both PS1 and PS2 simultaneously, all the the wavelengths of 700 nanometers will be absorbed by PS1 and all the wavelengths of 600 nano, 680 nanometers will be absorbed by PS2. Right? So that is the difference between PS1 and PS2. So now see things are gradually becoming complex. Now if you talk about the structure of these two chlorophyll molecules, chlorophyll A, P700 or 680, the structure of the chlorophyll molecules are the same, just that they absorb different wavelengths of light. When I say 700 nanometer, 700 nanometer is the wavelength of the blue region of the spectrum and 680 nanometer is the wavelength of the red region of the spectrum. So PS1 is good at absorbing the blue light and PS2 is good at absorbing the red light of the visible spectrum. Right. So now what we will see is how these photosystems, so the purpose of photosystem is to absorb light and then send it further. So where it will send that we will see a little later. So this portion is nothing but your photosystem where you have a reaction center, you have accessory pigment molecules when light falls on it, it absorbs light and sends it to the acceptor. Now how that happens we will see that. How exactly, what exactly happens when the light falls on the uh, photosystems. So first understand what are photosystems. Now please understand that each photosystem has all the pigments forming the light harvesting system that is the antenna. So what we can say is overall the purpose of a photosystem is to collect the energy over a broad range of wavelengths. Energy from the light and then concentrate it to one molecule and that one molecule is the reaction center which will utilize this energy 
and it will pass this energy to one of its electrons and then send it to a series of enzymes. So basically that is the purpose of photosystem. What will happen when light will fall? Light will fall on the accessory pigments also. Now these accessory pigments will also try to absorb whatever uh, wavelength they want to absorb and they will pass on their energy to this reaction center. This is the reaction center. And the reaction center contains the main pigment. So the reaction center itself will also absorb light energy of a specific wavelength. So now all the energy from the incident light is collected at the reaction center. Now getting so much of energy, the electron here will get excited. What happens in case of an electron? If you provide a lot of energy to an electron, the electron gets excited and it moves to higher energy levels. So similarly here also the electron will get excited and the electron will be sent from here. It will be released out from this pigment molecule and this electron will then be sent to through an electron transport chain where the electron will pass on through several enzymes and several molecules and during that process ATP synthesis and NADPH synthesis will take place. So overall that is how it is going to take place. Now we will talk about each and every step in detail one by one. So here you understand the just just understand the concept of photosystem. So if you look at the structure of your chloroplast, these were your thylakoid membranes. So in these membranes, you have the photosystems. So when light falls on them, these photosystems will absorb light energy of all wavelengths and pass on all the energy to the reaction center. And the reaction center getting so much of energy will excite the electrons and the electrons will be passed through a series of enzymes and molecules during which ATP synthesis and NADPH synthesis will happen. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.